Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover today. Several space weather items on the docket, four new pre-earthquake signals papers, an interesting and somewhat esoteric scientific rationale for shaking up the UN, and a tier one study on how the sun triggers major flood events. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we had an M9.4 solar flare, nearly X-class, and a strong filament eruption. We also have some solar wind enhancement in the large coronal hole following up the smaller ones we saw this last week. Let's start with the eruptive activity. Right side. Massive departing sunspot gave a goodbye as it heads over the limb, and a long duration M9.4 solar flare immediately followed top left by a filament eruption from a small magnetically active area. The flare actually did not produce much of a CME, but the erupting filament sure did. We'll take a closer look at each of those here. You can see the flash of the magnetic arc activity at the flare point, but also how most of the plasma was worked solely within the corona, not much in the way of an ejection at all. Contrast that confined activity with what happened on the incoming quadrant on the north, where the eruption point recruits plasma from even further north away from the disruption zone and releases it into space. This one, quite obviously not aimed at Earth, but certainly gorgeous. The previous coronal holes, which are now departing, have modestly inflated the solar wind pressure, minor density perturbations, but solar wind plasma speed rose from about 350 to 500 kilometers per second. It's a minor stream, minor geomagnetic effects only. I'd expect the stream from the northern coronal hole to be much more significant when it arrives in the middle of next week. It also is the type of coronal hole that surges the earthquake watch, 50% higher chance of excess magnitude events in the M7 range or above. Even without sunspots, we've got a solar watch. Let's go to four new papers on pre-seismic signals. We've got a rare look at non-electromagnetic atmospheric anomalies. Humidity and temperature can also work, especially on the U.S. West Coast. More on the magnetic anomalies that precede earthquakes, this one out of Greece and Turkey. The use of transformer data to detect some of the electron content anomalies that dominate this field of precursory activity. And my favorite, a look at the magnetic and electric geophysical fields before seismic events. This scientific field is exploding right now, and that's a good thing. Up next, a strange but interesting piece on why the UN needs a complete overhaul. I say scrap the whole thing, but good luck getting something like that published. It discusses the sun, magnetic field, cosmic rays, which are already surging as Earth's magnetic field is changing now, and even some odd esoteric concepts. It's almost like a mainstream scientist and a keyboard warrior had a baby, and then they wrote a paper. Lastly, folks, it's not the first time we've seen this correlation, but each one rings the truest notes. Solar proton data unquestionably linked to major flood events with predictive power up to nine days in advance and accurate 81% of the time. Anyone who watches weather forecasts knows that's way better than modern weathermen do. The sun impacts everything in the atmosphere. And we greatly appreciate your support. Happy Easter, the only real holiday happening today. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 4 15 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone